Hello everyone. Today I will show you how to create a vortex effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. This effect is quite commonly used in music videos and I am sure you're gonna love how easy it is to create it. Let's start. And we are in the edit tab and this is our clip for today. It's just a four seconds clip and I got it from Pexels videos. And firstly, let's duplicate our clip with command C and command V. I will explain why a bit later. But now, in order to create the effect, we have to remove the background from the duplicated clip. And to do it, we will use the magic mask tool in the color tab. And if you are interested in the magic mask tool, I will send you to my other tutorial where I am showing how it works step by step. But now let's just go to the color tab and here I've got my magic mask tool selected already. So I will grab a selection tool from here and I will toggle the mask overlay to be able to see the selection. So I'll go to the very beginning of the clip and I will draw a line on our object. Okay, and here's our selection, but in order to make it work, we have to track it. So let's track it forwards here. The tracker can be a bit slow, depending on how powerful is your machine. Okay, and let's have a look at the selection. Looking all right, but I've seen that here we have to add another stroke to cover the whole person. So let's track it again, backwards and forwards. All right, and now I will disable the color overlay and to be able to see our selection with no background, we have to right click here and select add alpha output. And now we have to connect those blue outputs together. And this is how our selection looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect, but let's try to improve it a bit more. So first I will change the quality from faster to better and it already looks much better. Then I will clean black a bit and I will go here up to 30 maybe. All right. And then I will blur it and I'll go here up to 10. Okay, perfect. And as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We could spend more time here perfecting the mask, but I will leave it as it is for the tutorial. So let's go back to the edit tab. And here I've got my original clip and the other one with the transparent background. And we could work with it as it is, but the magic mask is quite heavy on the system. And then in the fusion tab, we will be adding more effects. So in order to get a smoother playback, I will export the clip with the transparent background and I will import it into my project again. So let's go to the delivery tab. Then let's highlight our clip. Then here we can change the name of it so we can find it easily. And then if we want to export the clip with no background, we have to select individual clips, then format QuickTime, codec DNX HR, and then we will get the option to export alpha. So let's tick it. And then let's just add it to the render queue and let's render and save it in chosen location. I won't do it now as I've done it before. So I'll go back to the edit tab and then I'll go to the file, import, media, and I'll bring in my alpha clip. Okay, cool. So now we have to drag it onto the timeline and I will remove the sound from it as well. Now I will place it on top of the original clip. And now I will highlight both clips. I will right click and I will choose new fusion clip. So now we can just move to the fusion tab. And here we've got all the assets connected properly together. So I will move my nodes down here. And the first media in connected with the merge node with the yellow arrow is our background. And this is the node that we will be modifying. And the second media in 
connected with the merge node with the green arrow is our alpha clip. And the green arrow means that this clip is in the foreground, so on top of the other one. I hope it all makes sense. Okay, so let's click on the background node and let's add some effects to it. I will click shift space to bring up my tools and I will search for displace first. Then I will click somewhere here. I will hit shift space again and I will search for the fast noise. And then I will connect my fast noise with displace like this. So let's click on the fast noise. And here we will change the contrast, brightness, detail and scale of the fast noise. There's no right or wrong here, just have a look what works for you and you can always readjust those settings at any point. So I will drag my sliders around to get that funky distorted background. And now we won't be animating the fast noise, but the displays node. So I will click on it and here we will be changing the refraction strength by using keyframes. So look how cool it looks. And now let's say that we want to remove any distortion from the beginning of the clip. So I will change the refraction strength value to zero first. Then I will move my cursor to the frame 14. And I will set a keyframe here. Then let's go to the frame 22, for example. And let's change the refraction strength. And the next keyframe will be created automatically. And then let's go to the frame 30 and let's change it again to zero. All right. And now I will repeat the same process again to create my effect twice. Okay, and let's play it. I like it, but we only started. So now let's highlight this place node. Let's hit shift space again and let's add directional blur. And here we will be animating the length of the blur like this. And here also we can choose different types of the blur. So this is a linear blur. Then we've got a radial blur, then centered blur and zoom blur. So pick whatever you want. I like zoom, so I'll leave it. And now let's create keyframes. So I'll put zero at the beginning of the transition, our frame 14, as previously. Then on the frame 22, I will change the length of the blur. And then at the frame 30, I will go back to zero. And I'll repeat the same process for the second transition. And let's have a look. Okay, great. And now we will add another node after directional blur. And it will be transform because I want to add a rotating movement. So it looks even more interesting. So here we'll be animating size and angle, setting keyframes at the same frames as previously. So let's start from zero here and then we will rotate it at 22 frames and I will zoom it in and then at 30 frames I will go back to one next to the size and zero next to the angle and then again I'll repeat it for the second transition. And let's have a look. And now, in order to make the transition look smoother, we will go here to spline. We will tick displays and directional blur nodes. And then we'll highlight all the keyframes and we'll hit S on the keyboard. Great, so now let's see the final result. Thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and feel free to leave a comment below. 
See you soon.